you know, it's funny. I got an email this morning from a woman who's somewhere in the United States and said, and it was a very eloquently intelligent written email and said, you know, I, I uh, my doctor ordered an LP little A test and it was in the stratosphere. And the, my doctor didn't know what to do about it. My doctor told me, don't worry about it. Uh, so, but she did her own homework. She started examining, searching LP little A all over the place at legitimate places. And somehow my name popped up a lot, which it should. LP little A has been a big part of my life. I've published on it, worked in labs for seven years that were doing serious testing and research on it. But the email was so nice and she, I have no idea what to do with this. And she left a phone number there, I actually called her up and spent a half hour, 40 minutes with the woman, got into a nice discussion and of course punted her to the people in her locale that could handle her and give her good advice. Because, you know, but it's baffling to me. Her doctor, I said, why did you get an LP? She's in her 50s, early 50s. Why did you get an LP little late test? She goes, oh, I don't know. My doctor ordered it. And I said, well, did the doctor, and then the doctor comes back and tells you, don't worry about it when it comes back deep red on the lab report form. Wait, but what do and you so do? Bizarre. What do you do? Because I, I see the conversations you and like Sam Tamikas have on Twitter and you know, I, we have in our, in our polygenic panels that we run, you know, there's, you can see the LPA genes. Um, but the thing is like, I know there's, I know there's pharmaceutical interventions that are coming along that are maybe yet to be approved or are promising, but it's like, you say test once I would, I would say this, say to you is like, okay, let's, you have sky high LP little late. What are you supposed to do about that? Is there a drug you can take now? Yeah, no, there, there's a standard of care what you do now. As you sort of indicated, there is no FDA approved drug on the market that is approved to reduce LP little a. But in fact, there is one drug on the market that can drop LP little a by around 25, 30%. And they would be your PCSK9 inhibitors, which are on the market because they drastically lower your LDLs that don't have APO little a attached to them, which statins and azetamide and benpidoic acid can all do. But none of those therapies lower LP little a, but PCSK9 inhibitors do. Now, there's a lot of research being done on three or four compounds that actually stop the liver from making apoprotein little a. So if you don't make apo little a, you can't have LP little a particles. The closest one is probably three years, two to three years away from completion of its trial. If that trial is successful and the drug shows no safety issues, then it might come on the market and be approved, but the trial is only being done in nightmares who have very high LP little a and have yeah. ha already had a heart attack or stroke. So the odds are good that the FDA would say, oh, we'll approve this drug for those nightmares, but we're not going to approve this drug for primary prevention to people who have high LP little a who have not yet had an event. So we'll see how that all pans out. There are other drugs that are going to take more years coming down the pike. So one day I think we'll have this solved. But until then, if I had a PCSK9 that was in the higher range, a lot of people just have less high range, you know, moderate to little bit of elevations. I think all you have to do in them is lower their LDL particle count, their ApoB. You're clearing the LDLs that don't have Apo little a attached. And there's certainly enough data that shows if you give statins to people who have high LP little a, you do improve their risk. It doesn't go down to zero. There's still residual risk, but statin therapy and other LDL APOB lowering therapy is the standard of care now for people with high APOB.